Hi everyone, I'm here to share something a little bit different than my normal content, but uh, potentially a new angle on my channel, something I want to explore a little bit more because I think I have a lot to offer in this space. So I see lots of people, especially on Reddit, inquiring, how do I get paid as a Flutter dev? And uh, this is just a bit of a rant, a bit of advice from another developer and from someone who has hired many developers in the past. Let's start with the lowest hanging fruit and then we'll work our way up to my real advice for you. So some options for getting paid as a Flutter developer. Maybe most obviously is uh, getting hired by an agency to be a Flutter developer. Another option is a startup who's building their app in Flutter. Maybe they'll hire you. Another option is being a freelancer specializing in Flutter, building apps for you know small startups or single man operations. You could also go the route of building your own startup, something that has a business model and can make money, uh, and of course use Flutter as your front end tech stack. And lastly, just to eliminate all things at least I can think of, uh, you could create content, uh, create courses, you know, focusing on Flutter and charge people to use them. I will say that this, out of all these things, is probably actually the biggest challenge, uh, something that uh, you know I've been trying to do um, in this channel and, uh, and on some course platforms, but it is a tricky thing to do uh, to you know, compete in that space for sure. So here's my real advice to you. Starting right now, if you're interested, you are no longer a Flutter developer. You are a software developer and you are going to build things in whatever tech stack makes sense. You're gonna position yourself with a wider net. And uh, keep in mind, if you're worried, oh, I, I, if I spend time on that, I'm gonna forget how to do Flutter. Like that's not how programming works. Uh, in fact, anything you learn in another technology, whether it's a backend technology or just a different front end language, is going to make you not just a better dev, but a better Flutter dev, because a lot of these things are actually cross-platform, if you want to put it that way. So if all you know right now is maybe Flutter and Dart, uh, here's kind of a path that I'd say would make sense for you to grow as a developer. Firstly, you're going to want to learn HTML and CSS. I know it sounds boring, um, but most of the internet is powered by these two technologies. And uh, just learn it. Um, you'll actually see that it's not that bad. Next, I would say learn vanilla JavaScript. You know, don't go into a framework right away, just learn the basics. Uh, you'll find it very familiar. Um, there's a lot of common things between JavaScript and Dart. Uh, there's a lot of differences too, but uh, learning that is very important in my opinion, as opposed to just jumping into a framework. And that's a good segue to next thing, jump into a framework. Um, I would recommend, although it's not my favorite, uh, something like React, mostly because there's lots of jobs in this, it's being used a lot, and it has a very large community. Next, learn how to deploy something to the internet. You know, it's fun when your code's running on your own computer, but if other people can play too, that's a bonus. So you could go the route of just setting up a VPS and getting FTP installed and going and learning how to do that and transferring your files up. Um, or you can use the more modern things, things like Vercel, even like GitHub pages, just to get a static site up online on the internet. So now that your site's up, okay, so let's learn DNS. You know, learn how to point a domain somewhere. Learn what a subdomain is and how to point it. Learn about MX records, which are associated with getting custom email addresses. Uh, you might also need to do verify a domain at some point, uh, and that's where text records come in. Name servers, all these things. Get familiar with them. Um, they're not that complicated. They're really just kind of like routing tables of you know this goes to this IP address, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Next, I'd say learn a meta framework. So if you picked up React in previous couple steps ago, uh, something like Next.js makes sense. But if you want the Vue root or the Svelte, they all have their comparable meta frameworks. This will allow you to build sites, uh, applications that have server-side rendering, um, which is much better for things like SEO and page load speed and various other great things. Next, I'd say just learn a full stack backend and you don't have to like learn every part of it, just kind of get familiar with it, go through the official tutorials, you know, try and build something in it. Um, some things that come to mind are things like Laravel, Django, Ruby on Rails. And keep in mind what you'd be building here is a server side rendered application, uh, not something that has an API yet, <laughs> which is a nice segue to what I'd say is next is build a service. Um, you could use something like Fast API if you like Python or Django Ninja if you like Python and Django. Um, there's also 
Express, very popular in the JavaScript node world. Uh, things like Dino, uh, you can build services with. And now that your tool belt has grown, I'd say the next challenge for you is build a decoupled app. Um, you can, of course, use whatever you did your service in on your back end or use that as an opportunity to learn something new if you want. Um, and then the front end can be anything you want. Uh, in fact, it could even be Flutter now. Uh, so now you actually have built a full stack Flutter app um, that has a back end that's not just something like Firebase. After that, why don't you make your portfolio site? Maybe it's just a blog right now. Um, if your portfolio is not big enough, maybe it's a combination of those things. But please, please, please do not build your portfolio site in Flutter. It's not what Flutter is meant for. Build it in something like <laughs> and any of the things we talked about earlier, a static site in HTML and CSS. That would be great. You could really go crazy and use something like Wagtail built into Django and actually have like a proper CMS and blog. Uh, there's a million other options. In fact, like... If you want, build it in Squarespace. Use a no-code product. Like, Just don't build your portfolio site in Flutter. It is not what it is meant for. So some other things you could dabble with, either uh, during this process or after, and these are not necessarily specific technologies, but just concepts that can be you know, introduced and, and used throughout your journey. Take a look at uh, some services, You know, integrating things with SendGrid for sending emails, or Twilio for sending text messages, S3 for static files, uh, Stripe for collecting payments. You know, Pick a few of those, get familiar with how, how it works, and uh, see the big picture. Then maybe you want to check out some platforms as a service, Pass. Uh, so that's things like Heroku, or Render, or Vercel, basically things that make your life as a developer a lot easier than my life was 10 years ago when these things didn't exist and you had to do it yourself. <laughs> Good times. Then maybe you want to check out some backends as a service, Bass. Uh, these are things like Superbase, which is probably my favorite of this category. Um, there's also obviously Firebase and AppWrite. Um, you know, if you can get out of the Firebase world, you know, like that's pretty common for Flutter developers because partly because that's made by Google, uh, I imagine, um, and partly because it is pretty simple. But Firebase is great for prototyping something. Um, I really don't see it as something I would ever build something, you know, production ready for, unless. It really just suits the real-time database uh, sort of world. Uh, so I'm not saying don't use Firebase. I'm just saying explore outside of it. So another category of things to check out are what I would call just concepts, uh, not things that are specific to a language. But uh, we have things like webhooks, which are uh, used all the time, um, async worker operations, uh, basically being able to run a complex process in the background on a worker uh, instead of your user having to wait in an HTTP request for something to finish. Uh, very popular pattern, uh, especially now, I think, with like machine learning and all this kind of stuff, things that don't just happen you know, in milliseconds, but instead sometimes minutes, sometimes longer. Uh, another thing to check out, image manipulation. You know, it's a big thing. How do you crop an image? How do you grayscale it? How do you lay two things on top of each other? Uh, you'll find it's probably something you're going to have to do if you're making an app that has some kind of, you know, shareability in it or or whatnot. Uh, another topic, caching. Um, you know, make everything really fast with caching. Uh, that's just something you should check out, uh, whether it's the caching on the back end and the API, caching at the database layer, or caching on your front end. Uh, it's a complex topic that uh, is something you will be seeing a lot of in your journey. All right, so let's look at the options I suggested at the start of the video for how to get paid from like a different angle now, now that you are a software developer instead of a Flutter developer. So some options are you could get hired by an agency looking for a web mobile developer instead of just specifically one little technology. <laughs> uh, you could get hired by a startup who's just looking to build an app, get their business launched uh, that don't know, you know anything about tech. Uh, they may, might not be looking for a Flutter developer. Maybe the product is just a SaaS product that you know Flutter isn't the right choice for. It, it could be something you want to do in SvelteKit or, or whatever, or maybe Flutter's a piece of the puzzle. Regardless, now you have a much better resume to essentially get that gig. You can now freelance as a software developer. So again, wider net, more options. Good luck. Have fun. You can also make your own startup. And now you can choose the technology that fits your concept and the business better than just trying to make Flutter fit within. And maybe Flutter is part of that stack again, but uh, you know, at least having the options there and, and understanding the process and being able to be responsible for potentially the back end part of it too, um, it just puts you in a really good place to get something to market. 
And of course, you can make a course or content in just the software space in, instead of specifically in Flutter. Uh, you know, maybe you're going to take AI and mix it with Rust and put it on the blockchain. I don't know. I probably don't do that. And again, I will say it is very hard in this space uh, to, you know, be making content and making money from it. Uh, I will say it firsthand. Uh, so it's just something I want to include because it is an option, but uh, I'd say it's a low recommendation in order of what you should be thinking about if what you're trying to do is make money. My final advice is you got this. Like really, if you are competent enough in Flutter that you think you can get paid to do it, you're competent enough to learn these other things. Uh, and you don't have to learn all of it. You know, maybe this was a little overwhelming. Like, I was, how am I going to learn that? Just start somewhere and, and kind of work your way through. Uh, you got this. Like, you're smarter than you think. Um, you know, you're going to doubt yourself. It happens every day for all of us. Uh, you know, I've been coding for most of my life. And of course, every day I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And then I figured out, I'm like, yes, okay, <laughs> I know how to do this. I'm so smart. And then like something else stumps me and I think I'm an idiot. That is what we are doing as being a software developer. So just, you know, go for it. And trust me, I love Flutter. Like, I wish I could just work in the Flutter and Dart ecosystem, you know, every day, all the time. It's the only thing I'm doing on my computer. But uh, it's it's just not the truth of the matter, um, at least for me. And, and I think, you know, for a lot of successful people out there, you need to sort of understand and, and learn and use these other things. Like, for instance, I'm very often writing HTML and CSS. After I record this video, I got to go make a little website in HTML and CSS. Uh, yay. Um, but it's it's fine. It's good. It's, it's, it's life. Um, I'm also, you know, doing things in TypeScript, in Python. I'm writing Docker files. I'm making bash scripts. Um, I'm dabbling in things like Go and C Sharp for various reasons. I also spend, honestly, a lot of time in things like Excel, um, Google Docs, Figma, uh, Canva, and <laughs> whatever else. You know, I'm, I'm not just writing code all the time. And of course, I'm, you know, typing emails. I'm answering the phone. I'm doing Discord correspondence, messaging people on Slack, clients, customers, and, uh, you know, people I'm working with. Uh, so just want to put that out there that, uh, you know, you're not just going to ever, you know, unless you're the luckiest person in the world and you found your niche, like you're not going to, you know, just work in one thing and focus on that. Thank you for listening to my rant, and uh, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments if this content is interesting, because I am thinking of working on a series that's focusing on freelancing in tech. Uh, and this will cover, you know, not just the technical side of it, but a lot of the soft skills, a lot of the how do I quote something, how do I bill someone, how do I get paid, um, even just things like how do I share my progress with my client, um, how do I um, handle critique, uh, red and green flags to look for, you know, when you're when you're taking on a job or quoting a job, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, I have a lot of experience in this outside of just like my tech know how um, that I think is worth sharing. So, yeah, definitely let me know in the comments. You know, I'm not going to go make this series if no one says anything like, oh, this was great. Um, because I want to you know, obviously focus on, you know, making content uh, that is helpful and uh, to to other developers and and really other entrepreneurs so um yeah let me know uh like this video subscribe all that good stuff and thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one